Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. We've got card number four out of four in the Kitchen Table Stamper Paper and Ink Card Class for August 2019. Now this is card number four, this is card number three, this is card number two, and this is card number one. They'll all be linked below the the um, video in the description if you're on YouTube and if you're on the blog there will be hyperlinks right underneath the embed embedded video to get to each of these cards so you can see the whole class. Now when you place a $50 order or more at marissaalvarez.stampinup.net using this host code you get a card kit for each of the cards absolutely free and automatically when I close the host code your mailing address on your order will receive a kit for each of the cards automatically. If you live in the Chicago area and you're interested in card making classes, I do this class in my Rolling Meadows home studio on the third or fourth Monday of the month. You can check out kitchentablestamper.com slash calendar for a listing of events coming up. Or email me anytime for anything crafty at marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. All right, so let's take a look at this card and the Stampin' Up! supplies that you're going to need to make it. We've got our Free as a Bird stamp set for our greeting. We're pairing that up with Country Home. This is from the um, annual 2019-2020 Stampin' Up! catalog. And you're going to need a Soft Suede Stampin' Pad and Crumb Cake Stampin' Pad. I've got some Stampin' Blends for this project and let me show you what they are. We're going to do a, a, quite a bit of coloring. I've got some, let's see here, let me tell you what I got. This is Soft Suede Combo, Mossy Meadow Combo, we've got Crumb Cake Combo, Petal Pink, this is the dark shade, Mint Macaron Combo and I've got Old Olive Combo. Let's take a look at the kit and see what it includes. In your kit you'll find that you have a card base. This is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter, and we've embossed it for you with the tin tile embossing folder. You'll also find a crumb cake piece. Now this crumb cake piece is one by four and three quarters and it's corrugated or embossed with the corrugated 3D folder. That's done for you. Now you're going to find in your kit a designer series paper piece. This is from Garden Lane designer series paper and it's got kind of a leaf pattern on one side and a kind of a quilty looking pattern on the other. This is one by four. There's two pieces of Whisper White in your, in your kit. One you're going to stamp the um, urn on. One you're going to stamp the flower arrangement on. Now both of these pieces, let's see, what are they? Two by three and a half. Got about 11 inches of linen thread for you in the kit. And a crumb cake oval. Now this is from the Stitch Shapes dies and it's the smallest oval. It makes the best little sentiment tag. I've really been on to that lately. Alright, so that's the kit. Let's clear aside and get the stampin' pads. Let's stamp in color. Alright, so our Whisper White pieces. Let's start there. We're going to ink up in crumb cake and we're going to stamp this urn and it's going to go about a quarter of an inch from the bottom of one of these Whisper White panels and you want to make sure that it's level at the bottom. Good. So it looks like it's standing on the level surface. And the other piece of crumb cake you'll, or the other piece of Whisper White you'll ink with crumb cake and stamp this bouquet. It might be a tight fit, but not impossible. All right. Just while we're at it, let's go ahead and do our greeting. Got that little thank you from the bird ballad and we're gonna ink up with soft suede and stamp thank you all the way to the right of our little oval. Very light pressure because it's such a fine script greeting. We don't wanna smash it all out. All right, let me clear away the ink pads and we'll do some coloring. 
Okay, so it's two shade blending for all of this. And I like to kind of start with a color and then keep on going and do all of that color in a design. So I'm gonna start with my crumb cake and I'm gonna do my little urn here. I'm going to swipe in lightly and just fill one section at a time. So I'm working on this top half of the jar, filling in with crumb cake. In an area this big, I might use my brush, but I have far more control with my bullet. It takes a little bit longer to fill, it, to fill in, but the amount of control is so much better for me. All right, so I just did kind of the rim of the jar and I'm gonna come down the right side and I'm just gonna draw in a little shadow that kind of goes along the top edge here, down the right side. We're gonna bring the dark and light together. Don't overdo it. We're gonna do kind of a complementary shadow with just light on light on the other side there. Then we can do this little segment here. Just fill in with crumb cake. I'm gonna continue that complementary shadow, the light with the light. And then we're gonna continue this one to bring the two shades together. And then this bottom section. I work in sections like this because wet ink likes to blend. Dry ink likes to make watermarks. So if you just work in sections, then you'll find that your ink stays wet longer and you get smoother blends between the shades. All right, now I'm gonna go back, backtrack here, do these little handles. And work in some shadows on the back there. And work the shades together. All right, and that's all the crumb cake in both pieces. Now I'm gonna go to the old olive because then I'm gonna leave that crumb cake have just a second to dry so that it doesn't blend into my mint when I do the other part of the jar. So I've got my light old olive and all of these little three leaves here our old olive. So I'll fill them in and then I'll draw in just a little shadow with the dark old olive. Right along the base there, kind of where the leaves overlap each other. And then scribble the two together. Now we're gonna do that same technique over on this side for all these little bits and leaves here. All right, so there's our old olive leaves. Now let's go back to our jar and our mint macaron. We're going to fill in this whole section here. So I've got my brush point doing nice round strokes and just filling in the wet pocket. So you see I kind of go back over what's wet as I bring in the new next segment. When that's done, now we can switch back to the bullets. I'm going to follow these shadows that we kind of worked in on the crumb cake, sticking to that left-hand side. And then we'll bring those two together, the light and the dark shade. And then, again, we need that softer shadow down the left side. And that softer shadow there gives us um, a feeling, a look of roundness. Because as something is further away from the eye, it'll be lightly shadowed. Or it'll be slightly, appear slightly darker. And that's what we're going for there. And then in our bouquet, we've got this one here that looks kind of like an artichoke. 
and we're gonna color that one in with our mint macaron. So I'm gonna just scribble in the whole thing with the light shade. And then now we can go in with this darker one and we can add some shadows where the layer of leaves that the further out layer of leaves would kind of cast a shadow. So we're working in a little bit of texture, a little bit of dimension there. All right. From here, it's gonna go rather quickly. The coloring's pretty simple. We're gonna go on all of these little leaves on these three sprigs with mossy meadow. I've got the light mossy meadow. And then what I'll do is up each side, I'll dot just the littlest bit of the dark at the stem and swipe to bring those two shades together. I'll do that for all these little leaves and all these little sprigs. All right, Mossy Meadow is all done. And I've got Soft Suede. I'm gonna fill in these cattails here. Soft Suede. And then the artist has dotted up one side, so that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna follow that lead and we're gonna dot with the, with the darker and then kind of spread those dots, soften those dots with the lighter. All right, last color, petal pink. We're just gonna use that petal pink on these little berries. Scribble them in. Now, I'll clear away the markers and I'm going to fussy cut my little flower arrangement. We're gonna cut it right on that crumb cake line. We're just going to liberate it from the excess white. What that's gonna allow us to do is create this excellent dimension with the dimensional adhesive underneath the extreme ends, but at the vase, it's gonna be nice and low. It just makes a pretty little effect on the card. All right, I'm gonna do that fussy cutting, clear away the markers, and be right back to assemble this card. All right, guys, I'm back. I'm fussy cut and ready to put this card together. So let's get ourselves some snail adhesive here. And we're going to adhere the designer series paper to the card. And I'm gonna go generous with my adhesive because my surface is 3D textured. And I want to have this piece about um, an inch from the edge and centered top to bottom. I'm gonna really just burnish that down. Just give it a second. Now I'm gonna take my corrugated piece and I'm going to add some tear and tape adhesive on this piece because this corrugated is kind of loosey-goosey with the fibers after you run it through. It really does soften up the paper and it's such a deep texture. Strong adhesive is advised. And if you guys know me, you know that I use a lot of adhesive anyway. It's just kind of how I roll. We're going to move this so it overlaps maybe a quarter of an inch. And so it's centered top to bottom. And we'll burnish that one down gently. Then we've got our jar piece. And let's go ahead and put some snail on the left side here. And we're going to put some dimensional adhesive down the right side. Got this great piece from one of the edges, and I am just going to take advantage here. Use it up. And nobody likes a saggy middle, so let's do a little bit. Now we're going to center this one right to left top to bottom, and the remaining space. So you want about equal crumb cake and mint macaron. And then we can go ahead and use the rest of this little dimensional piece on our tag. Eh, it might be a little too generous. There's such a thing as too generous with the adhesive. All right, now you notice I left the 
end of the t um, oval clear here, we're gonna punch a little hole right centered in there. This is a 1 8 inch circle punch. Let's thread this tag up. And you're gonna have more thread than you need. You can tie a bow. I went with kind of a generous bow. Let's pick and stick our tag and trim off the excess. All right, last step. Got a little more Stampin' Dimensionals here. And we're gonna cut some little strips off of this one. So we're cutting them almost, the regular size Stampin' Dimensional, almost in a um, quarter here. We're gonna use these little strips to hold up these kind of extreme ends of our little floral arrangement. All right, so we've got those extreme end pieces and they're all bumped with some dimensionals. We're gonna take the bottom edge, the edge that's gonna be closest to the pot, we're gonna add some multi-purpose liquid glue and we're going to just run a bead of that along the very bottom of the flower arrangement here. Now we'll place our little arrangement so that it just goes over the very edge of the pot and burnish down the liquid glue and then tap down all the little dimensional edges too. There it is. There's our country home thank you card. All right, you guys, if you've got any questions about the paper and ink card class, free kits offer. If you've got any questions about the card, color and stampin' blends, if there's anything that I can do to help you stay crafty, email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com. And to shop 24-7, you can buzz over to marissaelvarez.stampinup.net. Thanks for watching.